Good day, good day. Uh, yesterday, you served as senators to George Washington's first Congress, and you had some very important decisions to make about um, problems our nation was facing. Uh, today, we are going to tell you about the solutions that the first Congress actually came up with and proposed to George Washington. This is a picture of George Washington with his famous white horse, Nelson. Uh, Nelson stayed with George Washington for almost 30 years. Uh, he was um, his famous horse that uh, he used through the battles of the Revolutionary War and continued to use as president. Uh, horses lived quite a while, so this is Nelson. The Pekingese Treaty was the first treaty uh, that we need to talk about, and this treaty was between Spain and the United States, and it was about the navigation of the Mississippi River. You'll see I have uh, the American colonial flag, the Spanish flag, and then also the British flag on uh, this slide, and the British flag is there for a reason. Uh, we sent Mr. Pickney's over to um, Spain to represent America, and when Mr. Pickney's got there, he uh, said to Spain, hey, we would like to use the Mississippi River, and we are willing to give you some of the goods. We'll give you 10% of the corn and 10% of the whiskey coming off of these ships in New Orleans if you allow us to use the river. Well, Spain kind of thought about this for a little while, and they said, oh, well, we, that might be a good idea, but you know, 10%, that's not very much. And so Mr. Piccany, being kind of a, a smart ambassador there, he uh, pulled a bluff on Spain and he said to Spain, well, here's the deal. You can either take our proposal for 10%, 10 or 15%, uh, and uh, if you don't like that, we've been in contact with Britain, and Britain is willing to go to war with us against you, uh, if you don't agree to our proposals. And so uh, Spain, fearing an alliance between the United States and Britain, negotiated, and our Western frontiersmen were able to then send their corn and whiskey down the Mississippi River and out to trade, with Spain getting uh, almost like rent of 10% from each boat uh, so that they would allow us to use the Mississippi River. Now, the next big uh, problem we had was about uh, sailors being impressed on the high seas, uh, trade routes, and um, and I'm also going to bring up the Indians on the western frontier uh, because they were being given guns by England. And uh, for this uh, problem, George Washington sent the famous John Jay over to England, and John Jay did some negotiations. And a lot of people, especially the southerners, felt that John Jay's treaty was uh, kind of weak, and, and Americans who didn't understand the treaty were almost kind of angry with the treaty. But the treaty did a lot of very good things. Uh, England agreed to leave our frontier posts on uh, the Ohio Territory, uh, at least temporarily for 10 or 15 years. Uh, and so the Native Americans would not be receiving aid or guns or supplies from England, and we uh, or our frontiersmen could go ahead and then um, attack Native Americans who would have been weaker. The most important part of the Jays Treaty is England opened up trade routes to the Indias and the West Indies. Um, they didn't agree to stop seizing our sailors, but they allowed us to use their trade routes, and this is critical. You can see here a map of the Indian Ocean and all the various trade routes. Now, with America having access to these trade routes, it's kind of like freshmen being able to walk down the senior hallways. Uh, we were able to go to um, ports all over the um, far west and trade our goods and collect goods to trade in other areas of the world. We used the English trade routes, which the English being more powerful than us, like the senior next to the freshman, the English said, oh, you can use those routes, but mind you, if you come close to an English ship, they are going to attack us, they are going to seize our goods, they will seize our sailors and the ship. Uh, a lot of people in America thought, well, gee, that, that's not right. But um, our American merchants and sailors recognize that this is an extensive amount of trade routes and that um, Americans could fairly freely travel along these routes just being cautious of British ships um, and that given time, the access to these routes would allow our trade industry to grow, allow our economy to grow, and hey, uh, 23 years later, we could be a very wealthy nation. So uh, it was a very good uh, 
treaty in many ways. It just seems like it's not such a fair treaty, but it, it really did a lot of good for uh, America as a whole. The next problem we had, again, were those Native Americans on the frontier. And uh, we were able to ultimately defeat the Native Americans using two means. Uh, first, we uh, the Indians did not have any guns or supplies from England any longer, and so they were a little bit weakened. But the other thing we did just before going in to attack the um, Native Americans, uh, we traded off blankets that uh, were contaminated with smallpox and, and other various diseases, uh, basically practicing genocide and biological warfare on the Native Americans, which was the, the main way uh, white America conquered Native American territories over and over and over again through American history. Uh, this is a battle, this is actually the Battle of Tippecanoe, which happens much later uh, in the 1800s, but uh, it kind of gives you an example of, uh, you see the uh, Americans fighting the Native Americans, and then ultimately uh, in this treaty, Native Americans had to move out of the Ohio Territory and give uh, the um, settlers room to grow. The battle that was actually fought uh, in this time period that we're studying was the Battle of Fallen Timbers, which gives the uh, Northwest Territories to the Native Americans. Um, uh, and again, because the English did not give the Native Americans guns and supplies, and because we as Americans were able to weaken the Native Americans with uh, smallpox and deadly diseases, we were able to easily go in and conquer uh, these poor people and take their land, uh, which is again is something we do over and over again in American history. Uh, finally, we had the decision of what to do about war between England and France. Uh, the Federalists wanted to show favor towards England, the Republicans wanted to show favor towards France, and George Washington finally made what we call a proclamation of neutrality. And he declared that we would not take sides with England or France. He advised Americans to play a fine balancing act between the two, try to keep Britain happy, try to keep France happy, stay out of war by all means. Washington stayed out of war. Our second president, John Adams, was able to stay out of war. He actually uh, was only elected one time because uh, Americans were so bitter that he would not go into war. Uh, John Adams on his tombstone says uh, that let it be known that he was the one who kept us out of war with France in the year 1800. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, too, was successful at keeping us out of war, uh, giving us a 23-year time period of peace at home to build our economy and to expand westward. By the time James Madison becomes president in 1812, America is now strong enough for war, and uh, we enter into the War of 1812 against Britain. Some people consider it our second revolution. We uh, defeat Britain. Um, some people consider it a tie, but it, it was really a uh, win for America in many ways. And the War of 1812 kind of launches America into the realm of, or the status of world power. And uh, again, the War of 1812, uh, 23 years after George Washington and his first continental, or his first Congress uh, established and solved the problems to all of the things that we have been studying in class. So I hope this gives you a better understanding of Washington's eight years as president and the problems he faced and the way that our country and our Congress dealt with the issues that came up uh, for them.